our equations is equal to zero. Wait. So if so okay, so because acceleration is going this way, right? That means that any other that means your vertical would um, be just zero. Yes. Okay. Right. I'm gonna do a quick, probably not as quick as uh, all of us would like, but I'm gonna do a side hit to with that, whether it's quick or not. Formally. This is the, the basis of the equation of motion, the template. I have four forces at this point acting on it. So I have F, negative F, J hat. Try that one again. Negative F, I hat, uh, plus Y, J hat, plus W, sine, theta, I hat, minus W, cosine, theta, J hat. So I just started here and just worked my way around is equal to the mass times the acceleration, which is A, that's the magnitude, I hat. That's the formal, truly formal aspect of it. The I hats have to balance on both sides, the J hats have to balance on both sides. If I look at the I hat pieces, that's our first equation. The J hats, there's nothing over here, so that's why it's zero. That's the second equation. Oh. Okay. Cool here. So. All right, so we now have got their equations of motion. If one of your equations is not set equal to zero, then your coordinate system is set up wrong or not set up as efficiently as it could be, the, or you've made a mistake, or acceleration is not in this easily identifiable direction. Equations of motion, oh, we did that. Substitution. So at this phase or stage, we are are there quest are there formulas that we can use that are not part of this problem specifically? These equations are specific to that problem. We're looking for things independent of that. And there are, we have at this point, two independent equations for forces. What are they? Would it be the equation we talked about? Or would it just be F or the equals M times the acceleration? Oh, well, that we've already that's used that one. That, that's how we got this far. We're not looking for that one. Is it the MS and MK question? Or the U? The mu's? Yeah. Uh, what are the, the mu formulas? otherwise known as friction formulas. So, is it the, is it like the FK equals MK times Y? Mu. Mu. MK times Y, that's a normal force, yep. And then FS equals <coughs> mu plus Officially, less than or equal to that. Because remember, static friction always will, will change depending upon uh, how much force you're applying until you hit a breaking point. Uh, for a problem, I don't know if this is how it works, would we always just do what is equal to and just assume everything below that could work for a static? Because it's less than or equal? Yes, yes, in essence. Uh, and then we have one other independent formula. I was thinking that as one formula, but reality is, I guess there's three formulas the way we present it.
Wait. Oh, so the car crash is working. Whoa. <laughs> well, that, uh, if you're connecting the formula for weight with the quadratic formula, you're either wrong or making it far more complicated than it needs to be. What's the uh, formula for weight? Equals, weight equals mass times gravity. Oh. <sighs> Lower my glasses at you, young man. Math, uh, mass times uh, what's the gravity. Well, Somebody? Acceleration is a graph. There we go. Oh. Weight is a force due to gravity. I see. All right. So these are the two formulas. So the W equals mg, that's simple enough. We'll plug that in. We'll just go ahead and do that. So it's just substitution. We're taking this and plug it in wherever there's a W. So I have mg sine theta minus friction is equal to mass times acceleration, and y. And at this point, this is equal to zero. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this over to the other side and do the substitution. All right, so before we deal with the friction, any questions on this substitution here? Now, at some point, there's a good chance, instead of writing in our force diagram, W over there, I'll write MG in the force diagram itself as the label and just do the substitution early on. Just depends on where you want to do the right. So, just to clarify, whenever we're using weight, we just substitute in the step we're before with the MG? Yep. All right, now the friction piece. The general steps, if, if it's starting at rest, and let's assume this starts at rest. If it starts at rest, the steps are assume friction is the maximum static friction, which would be equal to mu s times the normal force. So assume friction is? You're at, that, you're at the breaking point. It hasn't moved yet, but you're at the breaking point. And you're basically trying to see, do I have enough to get it to go? If the direction of acceleration is correct. That's supposed to be the word correct. Is correct. Then if a is less than zero, not moving. If A is greater than zero, use the kinetic friction. So if direction is correct, then what is it then if? Yeah, then then you have two scenarios here. If acceleration is less than zero, not moving. If acceleration is greater than zero, use FK. And what if acceleration is zero? Not moving. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess less than or equal to zero. So, what is the like main goal? Are you trying to get acceleration? Like in this step, are you trying to get acceleration zero or? No, we, we just want to figure out what is the acceleration at all. So this is just, if you, because I don't know whether it's sliding or not, do we have enough to overcome the static friction? And so that's why we have to, let's assume it, it's not going to, or let's assume we're at that maximum, at the breaking point, are we going to exceed it or not? And then if you do, you have to go to the other. Yes, absolutely. Now, I hated these problems as a student where I had to do the same problem twice. So I have sympathy for it and I take that into account when I'm doing the problems where I'm going, all right, I hate this problem. Yeah, I'm not gonna subject him to it. Or I'm in a particularly bad mood and uh, you know, the dog just crapped on the floor and something like that and I'm writing the test and going, screw everybody. 
Only one time I've ever written a test when I really should not have, and that was sick when I wrote it. Physically sick. How bad did it go? It was about twice as long as it should have been. <laughs> just wasn't in the mood to, you know, go through and cut problems out. <laughs> So instead of like 10 questions, it was like 20? Yeah, something like that. It was, yeah, it was not it. It was four students. Anyway, my grading system accounts for if it's a really bad question or an unfair test. Enough about that. All right, so we're gonna make this substitution here. So we have friction, we're gonna assume maximum static. So in some of these problems, I will just say, it's already moving, that way you don't have to go through the static step, you just immediately plug in the kinetic. So mg sine, so we have now mg sine theta minus mu s times the normal force is equal to mA. And well that's then that second equation holds true, there's no some extra substitution there. And I recognize I went off on tangent there. Hopefully not messing with too many people about any questions at this point. We're done with the substitution phase. So the... Hmm. Well, while you're thinking, Skyrim? So the arrow going down to that last equation. Yeah, I just didn't feel like rewriting well, it. But is that last equation, those two put together, or just that... Uh, y equals mg. Comes the second out. equation is this, that right there. Okay. Oh. In the solving phase, that's when I'm going to pop this in for y. Okay. I mean, it's there's some gray area in there, but that's the way I, my mind is working on it. Okay. So that very last equation is both of those two put together. See, that's why if, I'm if, confused. Oh. So because I'm substituting this into here, that, yeah. that's part of the substitute. When I'm saying substitution, I'm talking about plugging these formulas in, uh, the ones that are independent of the problem. Okay. And so that's why I don't consider that, because this is problem specific. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not considering that part of the substitution phase, but more of the solving phase. Okay. But you are, it is substitution. Okay. So. You're, you're going to have your I hat formulas and you're going to have your J hat formulas. And when your your J hat formulas, your J hat formulas are most likely going to end up having the uh, the normal force. That happens a great deal of the time the way I do it. And, and yeah, and so when it, when it happens that way, your your friction once once you're able to identify the whether it's static or moving you're able to then switch that out for the mu sub sy or mu sub ky, mm -hmm. and then that gives you your y so that you're able to plug in the j hat equation into the i hat equation. If I understood you, yes. Right. Awesome sums. Let's do it. All right, so now that when I consider the solving phase, I have two equations. Let's think about what we actually do and do not know. I know the mass, I know acceleration of gravity, I know the angle. I know the mass, I know the mu sub s or mu sub k, we'll do that later. I know theta, I know g, I know m. These are my two equations. I have two unknowns. I don't know acceleration. I don't know normal force. So two unknowns. Is normal force equals mg. Well, times we can solve for it. Oh, okay, okay. It's not not a given. Okay. Two equations, two unknowns. At the point that you want to substitute numbers in, that's up to you. I'm not. I'm going to wait till the end to do that. So now doing that, I got mg sine theta. Minus mu sub s 
mg cosine theta is equal to mass times the acceleration. Mathematically, I do have a common factor to the three terms. And what is that common factor? Is it mass? It is. So I can divide both sides by the mass, which I would need to do anyway to get KL by itself. And so mass cancels out here, and then this mass cancels out with that and that. And what I'm left with is my acceleration, is g sine theta minus mu s g cosine theta. And now it's plug and shut. So this is about six minus eight, three times eight. And which one are we doing? Mu sub s and mu sub k? The mu sub s. We have not established yet whether it's moving or not. Now, there are various things that you can do as shortcuts uh, so that, you know, I'm going through the formality of it so that if you get a more complicated problem, there's still the steps involved. Yes, there are shortcuts that you can take along the way. At some point, I'll start taking them, but until then, doing the steps. Tristan? So you see we haven't established if it's moving or not. So if, we have a, if you don't know if it's a moving object or not, you just automatically just say? Yes. Okay. Um, will there always be a common factor that we can get rid of, or will we just know? Is there always, I hesitate to say always. Most of the time, maybe even that. Uh, mass cancels out in a lot of these. Okay. So you usually know the mass? Yeah, or if I, if I don't, again, if I don't give the mass to you, then you find it. I made a mistake or you don't need it. Okay. If you're ever doing a, a quiz and like in the testing center or something like that, or a test or quiz in the testing center, and it looks like there's information they didn't give you, and you, I'm not there for you to ask whether I made a mistake or not. Just make up a number for what you think is missing and work the problem from there. If you didn't need it after all, no harm. If I deliberately did not give it to you, then you know, I'll take off for that, but at least it shows me that you know something. And so this ends up being 3.6. All right, are we done with the problem? Well, actually. Is that the final answer? Other than units, is that the final answer? Use of S is 0.3. Right. G is 10. Right. Cosine of 37 degrees is about 0.8. So G cosine theta is 8. Oh, that was quite aggressive. I rounded. But back to the other question on the floor is do we just slap units on it, circle it, and move on? Stephanie, what what uh, what's next? Do we have to do anything with J hat since we already used J hat? Yeah. Do, we, do we have to do anything with um, I hat? We've, we've already done it. This okay. this is the I hat stuff. That's the J hat stuff. We combine the two of them. So yeah, no, we don't have to but do anything along that line. Something 
Yes, there is. Your, your, know, your gut is right on that. I know it. Gigi? Do we have to find... Because we, I guess we didn't, we had two unknowns, right? So right. Now that we have one... We don't have to find the normal force. Have, okay. Unless you're asked specifically. If we are done here, we're saying the acceleration of this object is down the ramp at 3.6 meters per second squared. But if it is moving down the ramp with an acceleration of 3.6 meters per second squared, it's moving. So using the static coefficient is not appropriate. We need to use the kinetic friction. So we do the same problem. So this is down here. If A is greater than zero, use FK. And so one advantage to not plugging in numbers too early is that all I'm changing here is, I probably should not use this there, UK, so UK, 0.25, maybe number four meters per second squared. So basically that's Is that just four meters squared? Four meters per second squared. Okay, I, I rounded, so if you work it out on a calculator, it should be a number close to four. Is there any ways to tell if it's going to be larger than one instead of just doing that problem, or should we just do that problem with um, U of S just to check? Oh, 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 a quicker way to determine if it's going to move or not? Here is probably the shortest cut as you're going to get. I know the force down the ramp is W sine theta. Mm -hmm. it, you're, 